hi in the previous lecture we have seen that the interpolating polynomials may give poor approximation if we have too many node points especially if the node points are equally spaced we may observe a visible oscillation in the graph of the interpolating polynomial near the boundaries of the interval of interest one way to improve the approximation is to go for piecewise polynomial interpolations we have learned piecewise polynomial interpolations in our previous lecture and we have seen that there is still a drawback in this approach what is the drawback well the disadvantage is that piecewise polynomial interpolations using lagrange's or newton's formula can be non differentiable at the node points we can overcome this difficulty of laws of smoothness by imposing more smoothness conditions on the interpolant at the node points there are at least two ways exist to construct piecewise polynomial interpolations with more smoothness at the node points one approach is to use piecewise hermit interpolation and another one is spline interpolation in this lecture we will learn the hermit interpolation and postpone the discussion on spline interpolation to the following lecture let us first define the problem of our interest we are given n distinct nodes x0 x1 up to xn and we also assume that the given function is sufficiently smooth well before defining our problem let us recall what we did so far in polynomial interpolations we seek a polynomial of degree less than or equal to n such that the polynomial value at the node points coincides with the value of the functions at the corresponding node points right this is the interpolation condition that we have demanded on our interpolating polynomial and we got a unique polynomial of degree less than or equal to n when we are given n plus 1 distinct nodes now in order to get more smoothness at the node points we will have to demand more smoothness at the node points for this reason we will assume that f is sufficiently smooth and we will look for a polynomial h of x such that the polynomial value at each node point xj coincides with the function value at xj that is in this expression i am talking about when you take k equal to 0 that will look something like this and in addition to this interpolation condition we now also demand that our polynomials derivative of certain order that is let us denote it by mj for each j okay and we will demand the value of the derivative of the polynomial should coincide with the value of the corresponding derivative of the given function at the node point xj so this is what we will demand and at every node point we may have different order of smoothness included in this condition this is a general problem that we pose and we will ask the question whether we can find such a polynomial for a given set of n plus 1 nodes of course the polynomial has to be of certain degree we will come to that point little later and such a polynomial is generally called the osculatory interpolation or it is also referred to as the general hermit interpolation let us see an example which is familiar to us the taylor's polynomial 
let f be a c 1 function on the interval a b, then we know that the Taylor's polynomial of degree 1 about some point x naught in a b is given by t 1 of x is equal to f of x naught plus f dash of x naught into x minus x naught. Right? Now, let us take x is equal to x naught and see what happens. You can see that if we take x equal to x naught, then t 1 of x naught is equal to f of x naught and in fact, we can also see that t 1 dash of x naught is equal to f dash of x naught. Now, let us compare this property with the definition of osculatory interpolation that we have defined in the previous slide. In the case of Taylor's polynomial of degree 1, we have only one node that is x naught. And in this polynomial, that is in the Taylor's polynomial of degree 1, we have taken m naught is equal to 1. And therefore, our condition now has to be h of x naught is equal to f of x naught that corresponds to k equal to 0 and h dash of x naught is equal to f dash of x naught. Right? So, this is what we have obtained from the Taylor's polynomial of degree 1. Therefore, Taylor's polynomial of degree 1 is an example for the osculatory interpolation at one single node x naught with order 1 at that node. Right? We can in fact increase the smoothness condition and the node x naught by one more. For this, we need to assume that the function f is a C2 function on the interval a b. Then we can see that the Taylor polynomial of degree 2 about the point x naught in the interval a b is given like this. Now, the question is, is this an osculatory interpolation at the point x naught? If so, what is the order? Let us see. It is not very difficult for us to see that if we take x equal to x naught in this expression, then t 2 of x naught is equal to f of x naught. Then you differentiate t 2 once with respect to x and then put x equal to x naught, you can see that t 2 dash of x naught is equal to f dash of x naught. Similarly, you differentiate t 2 twice with respect to x and then substitute x equal to x naught, you can see that t 2 double dash of x naught is equal to f double dash of x naught. Therefore, you can again go back to the definition of osculatory interpolations and see that t 2 is an osculatory interpolation for the function f with single node x naught with order 2 at x naught that is m naught is equal to 2 as per the notations introduced in our definition of osculatory interpolations. Well, in our course, we will restrict ourselves to a particular case of the osculatory interpolation and we refer this particular case as the hermit interpolation. What is this particular case? Well, given a C1 function defined on an interval a b, let us consider n plus 1 node points in an interval a b. Now, the problem is to find a polynomial h of x, well I will not always say this suffix 2 n plus 1, I will just say h of x. This polynomial h of x is of degree less than or equal to 2 n plus 1 such that h of x j is equal to f of x j that is the interpolation condition of order 0 and then we will also impose the interpolation condition of order 1 that is 
h dash of x j is equal to f dash of x j and this should happen at all the given node points right. Can you see why we demand the degree of the polynomial h to be less than or equal to 2 n plus 1 s. Yes. You can see that there are n plus 1 conditions from the function value and another n plus 1 conditions from the derivative of f. Right? Therefore, totally we have 2 n plus 2 conditions. Right? Therefore, you have to have the degree of the polynomial h as 2 n plus 1 because in order to achieve this 2 n plus 2 conditions, we have to have the degree of the polynomial as something like a naught plus a 1 x plus a 2 x square plus up to that many terms that results in Two n plus two unknowns, right? For that, you need the degree of the polynomial to be two n plus one, so that you have two n plus two unknowns, a naught, a one, a two up to a two n plus one. That is why we need the degree of the polynomial to be something less than or equal to two n plus one. Recall that this kind of condition is not something new to us. The same idea was also adopted when we were constructing the polynomial interpolation in our previous lectures. Right? The same idea now, but we have some extra conditions that forced us to increase the degree of the polynomial. Right? There is nothing new in this idea. Note that we are only demanding order 1 here right at each node. Therefore, if you compare the definition of oscillating interpolation in our previous slide, what we are doing here is we are taking m j is equal to 1 for all j equal to 0, 1, 2 up to n right. At every node, we are only demanding the smoothness of order 1. In that way, this problem is a particular problem of finding oscillatory interpolation in general. But in our course, we will call this particular problem as Hermit interpolation. Now, the question is whether Hermit interpolating polynomial exists for a given set of data. right? Well, first let us see how the data set should look like. Recall that when we were constructing polynomial interpolations using Lagrange and Newton's form, we had only two coordinates x and y, right? But we need one more extra coordinate now to construct the Hermit interpolation that corresponds to the value of the derivative of the given function. Well, here I have only given the value of the function as y naught y 1 up to y n and the values of the derivative of the function as z naught z 1 z 2 up to z n because these values may not come from some function. In general, they may come from any other source something like they may come from some experiments or so on. For that reason, I have just posed the data set in a general notation. Well, once we provide this data set, then our theorem says that we can construct a unique Hermit interpolating polynomial h of degree less than or equal to 2 n plus 1 with the required interpolation conditions as given here which we have shown in our previous slide itself. Now, I am just using a different notation here. Instead of f of x j, I am just using y j and instead of f dash of x j, I am using the notation z j. 
In fact, the theorem also gives us the explicit form of the interpolating polynomial and this explicit form is given like this. The first term is the linear combination of h i's where h i's are given like this and you can see that h i's involve square of the Lagrange polynomials. Recall that L i of x is the ith Lagrange polynomial. You should go back to our previous lectures and recall how these Lagrange polynomials are defined. Now, h i's are defined in terms of the square of Lagrange polynomials and also it involves the first order derivative of the Lagrange polynomial. And you can see that the first term is written as the linear combination of x i's involving the function value y i's. The second term is written as the linear combination of h i tilde and also it involves the value of f dash at the nodes denoted by z i's. Here, h i tilde of x is given by this formula. Again, you can observe that the square of Lagrange polynomial is involved in the definition of h i tilde also. Well, in this way, the Hermit interpolation is written in terms of Lagrange polynomials. We can also write Hermit interpolation using Newton's divided difference. We will not cover this in our course, but interested students can learn how to write Hermit interpolation in terms of Newton's divided differences from many books. For instance, you can see burden and phase for more details. Well, let us prove this theorem. It is not very difficult to observe that h is a polynomial of degree less than or equal to 2 n plus 1. Why is it so? Well, you can see that each h i's and also h i tilde are polynomials of degree 2 n plus 1. Why? Because l i's are polynomials of degree n, right? And now you are squaring them. Therefore, l i square is a polynomial of degree 2 n and you have one more degree coming from here. Therefore, h i is a polynomial of degree something 2 n plus 1. Okay. Similarly, here also you can see that l i's are polynomials of degree n and since you are squaring, this will be a polynomial of degree 2 n and then you have one more degree coming from here that will clearly tells us that h is a polynomial of degree less than or equal to 2 n plus 1. Now, our aim is to further show that the expression given like this is indeed the Hermit polynomial. For that, we have to show that the polynomial defined in our slide satisfies these two conditions at each node point. Let us see how to prove this. Let us take the first interpolation condition of 0th order that is h of x j is equal to y j for j equal to 0 1 up to n. Let us see how to prove this. Recall in one of our previous lectures, we have proved this important property of the Lagrange polynomial. Right? Let us use this property to prove this interpolation condition. How to do that? Well, you can use this property of the Lagrange polynomial directly into the definition of h i and h i tilde and you can see that h i of x j also satisfies the same property as the Lagrange polynomial and also you can see that h i tilde of x j is equal to 0 
for each j. Now, going back to the expression of h that we have proposed in our statement, you can see that h of x j is equal to summation i equal to 0 to n y i h i of x j and you can see that h i of x j is equal to 1 only when i is equal to j. All other terms will vanish in this sum leaving only y j and what happens to the second term? Well, the second term will vanish fully right. Therefore, our first interpolation condition is satisfied by the h that we have defined in the statement of our theorem. Therefore, the interpolation conditions of order 0 is proved. Now, let us move on to prove the interpolation condition of order 1. For this, let us first differentiate the given expression of h with respect to x to get this expression. Let us first understand how h i dash and h i tilde dash are obtained. Well, just differentiate h i with respect to x, we get this expression. You can see that keeping this and differentiating this gives us the first term and similarly keeping this term and differentiating the second one gives us this term right well let us not disturb this part because this is not required in our proof therefore we will not try to compute this we will keep it as it is and see what happens to this expression when we put x is equal to x j. You can see that when you put x equal to x j, then this term vanishes for all i not equal to j. Right? For i is equal to j, you will have minus 2 l i dash of x i right because this term will become 1 in that case and let us see what happens to the second term again the second term will vanish for all i not equal to j here also it vanishes for all i not equal to j and what happens when we put i is equal to j then again this part of the term will vanish because you have j here and i here. When j equal to i, this term vanishes and you will have only the contribution coming from the first term which will be plus 2 into L i of x i which will be 1 into L i dash of x i. Right? So, your first term is minus 2 L i dash of x i. The second term is plus 2 L i dash of x i, they will get cancelled and you will have 0. Therefore, you can see that the first term of h dash now becomes 0 and we are left out only with the second term. Now, let us see what happens to h i tilde dash of x j. For that, first we have to differentiate h i tilde with respect to x whose expression is given like this. When you differentiate it, you get this expression. Again, in this we have to put x equal to x j and let us see what happens. When we put x equal to x j, we get this expression. You can see that this is equal to 1 if i is equal to j and it vanishes for all i not equal to j. And then what happens to the second term? Well, for i not equal to j, this part will vanish. When i is equal to j, this will not vanish, but this will make this second term to vanish. Right? Therefore, as a whole, the second term will vanish for all j equal to 0, 1 up to n, whereas 
from the first term you will have h i dash tilde of x j equal to 1 if i is equal to j and 0 if i not equal to j. From here you can see that h dash of x j is equal to z j and that proves the second level of interpolation conditions also. right? Thus, we have proved the existence of the Hermit interpolating polynomial for a given data set and the formula is also given to us explicitly. Now, let us prove the uniqueness of the Hermit interpolating polynomial for a given data set. If possible, we will assume that there exists another polynomial of degree less than or equal to 2 n plus 1 with the same condition and let us see what happens. Remember, we already constructed a polynomial in this form and now what we are doing is we are assuming that there is another polynomial with the same property. Now, what we have to show? We have to show that the polynomial that we constructed should be the same as the polynomial that comes from somewhere. right? So, that is what we want to show. If you show that, then it means that this is the only form that you can have for the Hermit interpolation. Let us define R of x as the difference between these two polynomials. Therefore, in order to prove that these polynomials are equal for all x, we have to prove that r of x equal to 0 for all x. Right? To do this, let us first observe the following properties of r of x. First is that, since both h and script h are polynomials of degree less than or equal to 2 n plus 1 you can see that r of x is also a polynomial of degree less than or equal to 2 n plus 1. right? Second thing is, since r is a polynomial of degree less than or equal to 2 n plus 1, r dash of x will be a polynomial of degree less than or equal to 2 n. Also, from the first set of interpolation conditions, we can see that r of x has n plus 1 distinct roots, which are precisely the distinct node points from our given data set. Right? This is because at any node point x j, r of x j is equal to h of x j minus script h of x j. Right? But we know that h of x j is equal to y j and script h of x j is also equal to y j. Therefore, they get cancelled and you will have r of x j is equal to 0 and this happens for each j equal to 0, 1, 2 up to n. Therefore, r has n plus 1 distinct roots. Also, you can see that r dash has n plus 1 distinct roots why? Again, you differentiate r with respect to x that will be h dash of x minus script h dash of x. Again, when you put x equal to x j, you have the second set of interpolation conditions that will make r dash of x j also equal to 0. Therefore, the polynomial r dash of x will also have n plus 1 distinct roots. Now, let us take this condition that is r of x has n plus 1 distinct roots and we will use the Rolle's theorem. That implies that r dash of x will have at least n distinct roots. Right? That is in between two node points say x j and x j plus 1 say r is something like this 
then you can always find a point in between x j and x j plus 1, let us call this as xi j at which r dash of xi j will be equal to 0. It means all this n roots which you found from the Rolle's theorem are different from the n plus 1 distinct roots which we have already from our data set. Right? These xi j's may not coincide with the node points that we have. In that way, r dash of x already has n plus 1 distinct roots plus now you have n distinct roots. Therefore, r dash of x will have 2 n plus 1 distinct roots. That is what I am saying here. r of x has n plus 1 distinct roots implies r dash has at least n distinct roots different from the node points. How? Well, using the Rolle's theorem and once you have this, you can see that r dash of x has 2 n plus 1 distinct roots. What is the problem with that? Well, r dash of x is a polynomial of degree less than or equal to 2 n, but now it has 2 n plus 1 distinct roots that implies that r dash of x is a 0 polynomial. right? That implies that r of x is a constant polynomial, but we know that r of x has n plus 1 distinct roots. In fact, if you know that r of x has one root, that is enough to say that this constant polynomial is equal to 0. Thus, we have proved that the polynomial r of x defined as h of x minus script h of x is indeed a 0 polynomial that implies that h of x is equal to script h of x for all x in r. And this proves the uniqueness of the Hermit interpolation. Let us take an example and construct the Hermit polynomial for this given data set. Remember, we have two distinct nodes x0 and x1 right which implies that we have n is equal to 1 and therefore the degree of the hermit polynomial is 2n plus 1 which is equal to 3 right that is we have to construct the cubic hermit interpolating polynomial from the given data set let us recall the formula for H3 from our theorem. H3 is given like this, where now we have n is equal to 1, and Hi's and Hi tilde are given as they are in the theorem. Right? To compute the cubic Hermit interpolating polynomial, we first have to find h i and h i tilde and then we can write them in this form. right? Remember, in order to find h j and h j tilde, first we have to find the Lagrange polynomials. Therefore, we will start with computing the Lagrange polynomials. As a first step, we will compute L naught of x. Remember, this is your x naught and this is your x 1. Therefore, L naught of x which is equal to x minus x 1 divided by x naught minus x 1 is given like this. Similarly, L 1 of x which is equal to x minus x naught divided by x 1 minus x naught is given like this. Now, we have to construct the cubic Hermit polynomial from this data set. Let us recall the formula for h i of x which is given like this, where i is equal to 0 and 1. For i equal to 0, h naught of x is written in terms of L naught which is given like this and for i equal to 1, h 1 of x is written in terms of L 1 of x which is given like this. Remember, we have to also differentiate the 
Lagrangian polynomials in order to substitute here, right. Let us see how to get h naught of x, h naught of x is equal to 1 minus 2 into x minus x naught, therefore you have x plus 2 and then you have L naught dash of minus 2, you can obtain that from here and you can write it here and finally, this term will become like this into L naught square of x. Similarly, you can get the expression for h 1 of x also and that is given by this. right? Once we have this, let us now go to find h i tilde, how h i tilde is given, recall the formula for h i tilde is this and again for h naught tilde, we have to use L naught of x and similarly for h 1 tilde, you have to use L 1 of x and for h naught tilde of x, we obtain the formula like this and h 1 tilde of x is obtained like this. Now, we have h naught, h 1, h naught tilde and h 1 tilde. Therefore, we can now go to write the cubic hermit interpolation polynomial. Remember, the formula is given like this, right. You have y naught h naught plus y 1 h 1 plus z naught h naught tilde plus z 1 h 1 tilde. What is y naught? This is y naught this is y 1, this is z naught and this is z 1. So, you have to substitute these values and you can leave it in this form or if you wish you can also simplify it to see that it is indeed a polynomial of degree less than or equal to 3. Let us visualize h 3 and in fact, these data are taken from the sine function with the x values are taken in radians. Here, the black solid line represents the graph of the sine function, this one and the red solid line, this one is the graph of the Hermit polynomial H 3 that we have constructed just now. Note that from the given nodes x naught and x 1 with only the function values, we will get the interpolating polynomial of degree less than or equal to 1 from the Lagrange form or Newton's form. right? But here with two node points, we got a cubic interpolating polynomial. Of course, we have to also provide the information of the value of the derivative of the function. That is the cost we are paying here, but we are getting a higher degree polynomial with just two nodes. This is what we observe here. You can see that at the node points, the function value and the polynomial value are coinciding. This is the first set of interpolation conditions. And also, you can see that at the node points, the slope of the polynomial and also the slope of the function are coinciding. This is the second level of the interpolation condition, which is clearly visible in this graph. right? Well, as a next example, let us consider three nodes and the corresponding function values and the values of the derivative. Again, I have taken these values from the sine function with two digit rounding. Note that with this data set, we can obtain the fifth degree Hermit interpolating polynomial, but my interest is to obtain the piecewise cubic Hermit interpolation. For this, let us first give the data set in two pieces. The first piece has two nodes x naught and x 1 and the corresponding function values and the derivative values. right? This will give us the corresponding cubic Hermit polynomial interpolation. Remember, we have constructed 
this polynomial in our previous example, but now we will denote it by h 3 comma 1 of x because this is the polynomial that is coming from the first piece of the given data. right? Now, let us take the second part of the data set that is the nodes 2 and 4 and their corresponding values of the function and the derivatives. Again, we can construct the cubic hermit interpolation in a similar way as we did in the last example and let us denote this hermit interpolating polynomial by h 3 2 of x because this polynomial is coming from the second piece of our data set. Now, we will join these two to get the piecewise cubic hermit interpolation. Remember with the same node points with only the function values, we can also obtain quadratic interpolating polynomial in the Lagrange or Newton form or we can also find piecewise linear polynomial interpolation. Right? You can see that the piecewise linear interpolating polynomials with the same data set can be given like this. Here p 1 1 of x is the linear interpolating polynomial written in the Lagrange form coming from the first piece of the data set and p 1 2 of x is the linear interpolating polynomial again written in the Lagrange form coming from the second piece of the given data set. Remember here we are only using the function values, but not the derivative values to construct the Lagrange polynomials. Right? The derivative values are used only for the Hermit polynomials. Again combining these two piece of linear polynomials, we can obtain the piecewise linear polynomial for the given data set. And we also can obtain piecewise cubic hermit interpolating polynomial for the given data set. Let us try to see graphically how they look like. The blue solid line represents the piecewise linear polynomial interpolation. As expected, we can see that there is a sharp edge at the interior node of the linear piecewise polynomial interpolation. As remarked at the beginning of this lecture and also in our previous lecture, the piecewise linear polynomial interpolation is not differentiable at the interior node point. right? Whereas, you can see that the cubic hermit interpolation is coinciding with the slope of the function at the node points that is at minus 2 here as well as at the node point 2 here. And similarly, the second piece that is h 3 comma 2 is again coinciding with the slope of the sine function at the point x equal to 2 and that makes the piecewise cubic hermit interpolation to be at least c 1 at the point x equal to 2 that is the interior node point. Whereas, as I told the piecewise linear interpolation has a sharp edge here. right? So, that is the main advantage of the hermit interpolation. When we go to construct piecewise hermit interpolation, we will gain one order of smoothness at the interior nodes, whereas this is not the case with the piecewise interpolation coming from the Lagrange's or Newton's form of interpolation. As we remarked at the beginning of this lecture, there is another way to construct piecewise polynomial interpolation with more smoothness condition at the node point called this plane interpolation. We will discuss splane interpolation in our next lecture. Thank you for your attention.